Ah, welcome to Tour de Force Productions, my YouTube channel, or greetings if you know about it already. Now, you might find that my approach to photography is a little different. Let me explain why. My very first camera was an Alkva Select, and it's sitting on the table here. Purchased in the late 1950s for something like £10, and it's what we refer to as a fully manual camera. In other words, it doesn't have any exposure meter inside. Put it into the hands of today's real photographer and they would probably not, not know what to do. <laughs> well, in those days, of course, when my father purchased my first film for me, I couldn't afford one of those uh, exposure meters. And so I had to uh, rely on these things. Do you remember these? Uh, it's the Johnson Colour and Cine Calculator, where you dial in the information. I tried it out last night and, uh, well, I think when I was a teenager, I could work these better. Not now. Anyway, I'm going to show you uh, one of the pictures I took with this camera. It's of Preston Railway Station. Why? Well, you'll see in the image a steam train. Yes, a steam train going into the station when steam trains worked still on mainline services. So that will authenticate the picture for you that it was taken, what, around 1960 with that camera. No exposure meter. And that's what I refer to these days as real photography. Currently, at the time of recording, I have something like 250 productions on photography dealing with uh, gear, technique and places to visit in the UK and Ireland. But, as I said earlier, you'll find my working practices a little different. And by way of proof, I give you photographs and not numbers and graphs. I'll give you an example of what I mean. Back in 2003, Olympus launched the E1. It was a camera designed from a blank sheet of paper. And it only had, and I use those words advisedly, they only had 5 million pixels. Surely we were told that it's not good enough for quality photography. Don't you believe it? With that camera, I achieved front cover reproduction. Notice too that it is portrait orientation. The original picture was landscape, so therefore reproduced is not the full 5 million pixels. Also, with the launch of the E1, Olympus solved the problem of dust getting onto the sensor whenever you removed the lens. And that, as I say, they did back in 2003. It's a problem that still besets some other manufacturers today. I've still got the E1. It'll work perfectly, and I've never had to send it back to Olympus for servicing. During the course of some of my productions, particularly those on technique, I explode some of the myths associated with the hackneyed advice you might hear from elsewhere. I show you another way. My latest camera, the one I'm using at the moment, is the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II with the 12-100 Pro lens. I would show it to you, except it's recording this video now. But hopefully we might have a picture in the top left-hand corner of the screen. But the important point I wish to make, and this is very important, that whatever I do with that camera, I am not enslaved by its technology. Yes, I use it, 
but I have never forgotten my important grounding with that Agfa Select. Incidentally, in 1960, I joined the Dorking Camera Club, and I'm still a member of that club. And on the first season, I entered the annual slide competition, and I won it, and that sent shockwaves through the club. And do you know what the picture was? Yes, it was that picture of Preston Station I showed you a moment ago. Anyway, do have a look at the rest of my YouTube channel, which you can do by clicking the button. I think it'd be up there on the right-hand side there somewhere. And please become a subscriber. That won't cost you anything. Or if you wish to support my work, become a member and receive the perks that that membership will bring to you. Hope to see you soon.